no, let's jump into it. I want to hear about these snafus. I mean, I finished it, but I almost want to get your insight because I watched it as an outsider, went through it, really engaged in it all. But now to speak to you was behind. I didn't know you had a cold, right? You know, in those first episodes, you were just there. And that's amazing. You were able to just, you know, do that and work through it and transcend through it in a sense. Yeah. But yeah, tell me about those snafus. And a cold, you know, it, it's so small and simple, but everyone's feeling they have a lot on their plate. Everyone yeah. feels that way. And if you just look at, you have no idea what's going on with someone None. else. That's the, that's the thing, right? So Never. you have to, you, you don't know if you have a lot in comparison, you know, Ryan had seizures going on Yep. and, and had been in a motorcycle accident. This guy from Canada, you love him. He's just such a sincere guy, raised money from his community to be able to come on the trip. And, and he had gone, been in a huge motorcycle accident a year before and like really messed himself up. And here he is back on it again. And that's hard. You know, that's hard. It's um, when you've been in it, you know, you have that memory of it and it, it's hard to jump back on. And for me, the experience I, I had in episode, you know, I talk about it in episodes, but it was a, just a real day yeah. <laughs> in the trip. <laughs> These are real things. We weren't like, this is episode nine as we're right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Although I do look back sometimes I listen to, I made some audio notes. I go, I think this will be episode four. And like, it, it actually is. And it's, it, it's mind boggling. But um, so we were uh, at the, I don't want to too much of a spoiler alert, but to be honest, we're not, it's not the kind of series where it matters. If you know what, right. what happens, right. You're along for the journey. That's the, the road to Dharma is not to get to a place called Dharma to answer your way previous question. Dharma is itself the path. So it's a little bit of irony, the road to the, to the road, to the road, um, the, you know, and it's, it's funny like that to me, um, the road to truth or the road to the path, which shows you the truth continually. And that's when you realize, oh, that's what Dharma is. It's how I'm living. It's every day. So here we are coming back from the motorcycle trip in Rishikesh, India, and we're done with all the crazy stuff like that. And we're like, Hey, let's just take a swim across the, the raging Ganga river, <laughs> yeah. which is the monsoon rains for the, again, for those new to this series, the monsoon rains lasted a month longer than usual. We, you wouldn't ride motorcycles during the monsoons, right. But they happened to last a month later. So we were riding at the beginning through crazy rains and bridges were knocked down and landslides. So in the road, roads were muddy. So it was much more difficult than it was supposed to be. And the river was still really high and raging, even by the time, you know, three weeks later when we get, got back. But Anand, you know, likes to swim across it. And I've swam across it once before at that point, which I knew was hard. Uh, and this time I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to go for it. You know? So we all swim across the river and I really pumped hard. And I ended up, you know, the long story short, got caught in an eddy and um, things were going sour quickly. I saw somebody else panicking. Jeff was kind of, Hey, help, help. And I tried to float and it got, I was pulled under again because that's what you're supposed to do is just try and float and don't waste your energy. But she was taking me down and I'm like, okay, that's not working. And you're thinking, you know, you're having these thoughts and I'm like, oh, interesting. <clears throat> and I remember going under at that time and thinking, oh my God, my mom's going to be so upset. You know, <laughs> that's the thought, I mean. right? Like what an idiot, what an idiot, you know, like, <laughs> didn't have to cross the river. First of all, why are you doing this journey? But uh, she's going to be so upset, which, you know, I could talk about mom son relationships for hours, right? It's such a, we could, <laughs> you know, it's a unique, <laughs> unique <could. laughs> thing that I keep unraveling. So um, at that point, you know, I ended up calling for help, if you will, you know, and, and which was a good thing. It was like the survival instinct came in to call for help. But in retrospect, I look back and I really, was reacting and taking on some of the fear of Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I go into that much in the, in the show, but I, I in, re in retrospect, looking back, Jeff, who was panicking, I took on some of his fear. Now, in order to do that, I had to be afraid myself, right? But I let that wave heighten mine as if like justify my fear. Mm. You know, if I had looked over and someone else was calm, I might've been like, mm, okay. Um, but likewise, if he had looked at me and I was like, calm, he might've calmed him down. So I, that ripple effect happened. I bought into it a bit. And as much as I tried to, to do things right, you know, and in the end called for, I think it was a smart move to call for help. I recognized that lesson of like taking on someone's fear. Mm. And, and some years later, I was back in the Himalayas motorcycling 
and um, was in a crash, not even a crash, like the universe just slammed me down. Like, I don't know what happened. I was riding somehow, boom, on the ground and I broke five ribs and um, couldn't ride anymore, but continued on the, on the journey and had amazing epiphanies. And, you know, it's like meant to be the way it was supposed to be. It's not fun. You know, it's difficult to breathe at 16,000 feet without ribs. Uh, it's really hard. Right. Really. Yeah. And everyone, and you know, doctors are like, you know, you could have put, you could puncture the lung. We're not sure. So it could start leaking anytime and you never know. And you're like, thank you for the, you know, real advice, but that little fear keeps kicking. Right. And that brings us back to this fear and like taking on other people's fear. And that's what happened in that, in that crash. Also, I had taken on someone else's fear early before that day in a very subtle way, just about gas, you know, how much gas do we have? And it really taught me like, gosh, you can't do that at all, Adam. Like in life, you can't take on other people's fears at all. Like at the, if you do it at a subtle level, we're going to kick you down. Like that's where you're at now, man. Like if you take other people's fears on, I'm going to crash you. I'm going to hit you because that's not your role anymore. You're a leader. You need to stand in who you are. You know, you just rise up. Don't take it on. You know, you know, you know whether or not you need to be afraid or not. Uh, so that all stemmed from that, that, you know, talk about transcendence. Like that was my, I almost died in the river and it stunned me for that day. And I made sure I just didn't talk to anybody. And I just had my process and allow myself to physically go through it and cry and just release um, and everything. And then years, as years went by, I got to see the greater lesson and see it kind of repeating until I could fully work through it. Um, so sometimes the transcendence, you know, to really a long, long answer to your question, sometimes the transcendence is long. Mm. Right. There's this long process. Some things we learn there, like, oh, five years later, six years later are still unraveling. Um, even one guy that that recent trip in 2018 that we didn't film, one of the guys that was on it um, watched the road to Dharma after. So, again, 2018, we didn't film. Mm -hmm. Then he watches the road to Dharma. I gave him like a sneak peek of it. And he said, you know what? Watching the show helped me understand what I just went through in the journey because so much is going on. You're transcending all the time. And it's like, you can't really put a box around it or your head around it. And the show tends to like compartmentalize it a little bit. So you can go, Oh yeah, these are some of the lessons we went through. And he was able to really even see his own journey by, by looking back on someone else's. And that's where I think like to an audience member, you watch all these real people go through this motorcycle high adventure in a compartmentalized way with themes might help you go through whatever you're going through and give yourself some framework and go, Oh yeah. You remember how Fred was doing that in that episode or this, that's what I need to do now. And, and, you know, that's, that's the classic storytelling, give someone, someone they can empathize with and like the Greeks would do show them a way to like how to be right. So that you can mirror that and in, in media today, it's, it's a lot of that's lost, you know, in terms of, um, really showing people how they can be and rise up into their best. And that's why we make movies and stories. It should be at least. 